Is there a certain number, a maximum they can uh, have in 26, each? 26, yeah. 26? Yeah. For first grade, second yes, grade, yes. all grades? All grades, all. but we have also students with special needs. Yeah. They are smaller groups. How? how? Uh, 10, about. And do the students of special needs, like, do they still have, uh, do they have an assistance and to help the teachers? Or? No, we don't have any assistance, only special education yeah. teachers. And uh, special needs, are they inclusive or are they separate uh, at the school? It's uh, like so they make uh, all everyday things, they are together, but uh, they are learning with uh, special teachers. Oh, so but they're in a regular classroom? They, no, they are in, for example, if they have math, they have math, they don't have it together with other mm -hmm. students, they have in small groups. Okay. And they have, a, it's not only teachers, it's a quite different methods mm -hmm. to how they learn. Okay, so they're not putting them in no, regular no, classrooms? No. Okay, but so... Some uh, yes, we have a little bit of 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 a of course we have in big classrooms also students who have special needs and who need help. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are a lot of your teachers here older? I don't because at the other schools uh, I visited I didn't see too many young teachers. Yeah, it's quite big problem in Estonia. Yeah. Right. And we have uh, we are very lucky. We have some some uh, are younger, but mm -hmm. uh, not so much. So. And uh, we have uh, very uh, big lack of men. We don't have so much main teachers. Mm -hmm. So what are they doing to try to get younger teachers? Because a lot of these teachers are going to retire, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. They have, uh, but they really doesn't. They don't need system. They have more access to the data, the data system. Because we don't have those new methods. Yes, we don't have those new systems. It's because we need to get more people to be in the field. We need to get more people to be in the field. We need to get more people to be in the field. We need to get more people to be in the field. We need to get more people to be in the field. õpilase keskse õpetamisega ja, ja muutunud õpi käsitlusega ja et, et kindlasti nagu kui aastatel me õpetasime pelgalt õppekava. Mm -hmm. Aga just see võib olla see, mida ta küsimus, ja. et, et, et riigi tasandid vanad pööratakse tegelikult sellele suht lähele vanad. Mm -hmm. Aga see ei muutu kohe. Aga see võtab aega. See võtab aega. Mm -hmm. On a national level they deal with the uh, problem of uh, not having enough of young uh, teachers. So we have different... Uh, programs and different activities uh, to, uh, to, to popularize this uh, profession as a teacher and uh, to also improve uh, the, um, uh, the understanding or how people uh, see the teacher profession, what it means yeah. in society in general, so the teachers would be more valued so than the young children. Uh, uh, young, uh, the, the more people would like to maybe learn and become a teacher. Uh, yeah. One of the biggest problems is also that uh, the profession is very valued, but the salaries uh, are low. Are very very low. Yeah. Compared to, for example, Finland, where the teachers that's right. are so valued, but they are three, three times, are, yeah. literally three so that, times. That is for the young people, why they don't uh, become teachers? Right. So it, if they come, it's from the heart. It's it must be from your inner passion to become a teacher. So now, from the national level, what I've seen as as not being part of the schooling system is they're very actively. Even the president is constantly asking, "Come on, young people, let's go to school." And they're asking professionals to come to school and speak for a day, speak about your profession, speak about your experience. So they actually include the valuable people also in other ways to school. So they don't maybe become the teachers, but they give some classes at least. Mm -hmm. And that's very like, fascinating for kids also. Mm -hmm. Now you said a minute ago you're, you're a mother and you have a couple kids here? Yes, I have two sons here studying. And they were in 
in and they are right now they've been three months in in Portugal so the school just asked me to talk as a, as a from from a parent side how do I appreciate the school and what do I see is, is a difference and as I said beforehand was um, I think it's very special uh, because our class is um, is a quite um, ordinary class in a sense that we have 26 uh, kids in a class but a couple of them are super active none of them is uh, is uh, is not bright but some are just so active you know they are i don't know if they've been diagnosed or, or not but to keep a class balanced when you have super active kids inside it is what I think is very special in the school. They can deal with these kids. Mm -hmm. That maybe, you know, they are super fast in doing everything and then they start making a riot in, in a class. Mm -hmm. So the school has as a way of dealing with them. Either the same teacher deals with them or they are put in a, in a smaller group. And for instance, what I loved about it, uh, the school here was um, some kids were more advanced, for example, in math. And uh, then they would, the, t the school would find another math teacher so that during the math uh, studies they would go, like four boys would go to uh, another class and study even more deeply mm -hmm. the same subject. So, because just otherwise they would disturb the class because sure. they were super fast and uh, they also get more knowledge. Right. So these uh, kids have been right, supported from the, from the first grade actually, kids that show a bit of talent in some subject are really really supported in this mm -hmm. school so they are found uh, the school finds ways to a bit like uh, help them and more. for example in this year the same boys they get uh, lessons in gymnasium we make uh, one small group of boys and Girls. Two girls, yeah. and they go once a week in gymnasium and they get uh, some Lessons from gymnastic teachers and the high school. High school. Mm -hmm. high school. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they learn chemistry, physics, math. Yeah. This is my, my kid is also part of this uh, program. So uh, they are right now in the fifth grade, but actually go, they go once a week. They go to high school, and the high school teachers teach them chemistry, physics, math. And actually, it's the first time they went there, and high school teachers are a bit different than you know primary school teachers. And the and the and the very famous teacher in Perna sent a, a big letter saying, "Wow, amazing guys! Uh, uh, what knowledge! So interested in in math, in physics." And so they're at a much yeah, your math. your sons are at a much higher yeah. rate. Yes. So, okay. But the schools. Um, uh, idea was to to keep them interested in it. So they're doing high school math. No, no, no. no. High school, it's but not. they are they are introduced to what it will look like. Oh, in when high do school. they go to the high school? Or they've only been once. They go once a week to study with uh, other teachers in the high school. But when? What day? After after school. Today. Oh, after school. After after school. school. They go after yeah. school up after there. School. Okay, yeah. okay. They take a bus. They go there by themselves. Mm -hmm. They feel super proud to do it. Mm -hmm. And they are introduced to their high school life and the high school level of math, physics and chemistry. They had the biggest interest for the school was to keep them interested, mm -hmm. to show them it's fun, it's uh, fascinating, so they would not lose lose it. Because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, they because they, it, when you are 12 and you are becoming a teenager, then you kind of like a bit, you're like disfocused. But the school keeps them focused, showing that it can be fun, and and, um, and the boys really really like it. These boys are quite typical boys. They are not special in any way. But uh, but one of them was actually a guy who was super super. Uh, how do you say it? Like uh, there is a. Uh, I think that in a normal school or when I grew up. 
this guy would be called uh, a bit like a rioting guy because he would do everything super fast and then he would disturb everyone. But this school doesn't mm -hmm. control, mm -hmm. yeah, he doesn't control his reactions. He can speak like whatever during a during a class. When I would grow up, these guys would call would be called like okay, they are troublemakers. They are mm -hmm. disturbing the class. But this school found that he's not a troublemaker. He's super bright, but he just he cannot control his emotions mm -hmm. all the time. But he's not put away in a cage or, or called names. He's, he's supported all, uh, like others are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ja vaatame last tervikuna tema, tema tugevustes ja kõigis ja, ja pakume võimalusi ene saavastamiseks. Täpselt sama on ju see koostöö kunstide majaga, millest me võime ka rääkida, et see on see loogus ja, 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 ja aastamine. Et, et, et kindlasti üks lisa suur asi on ka see, et me, et me, et me näeme last ja tema võimed ja arendame neid, et miks meil on nad hästi olnud. So the, maybe the, uh, why the school did so well in Giza and etc. is because the school sees the children, each child, and their potential, uh, what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses, and they try to support each student the best way they can. So kids in the school took PISA test? Yes, yes. Yeah. and they did uh, really, really well. Mm -hmm. uh, the school, yes. Mm -hmm. Better than the, the average in Estonia? Yes. Yeah.